Happy Sabbath, Church. Happy Sabbath. It's our time to express our praise and prayers to the Lord. Let me start with two things. I praise God that our sister Amy and brother Ben is back. We're happy to see them back. We miss them so bad. Um, next thing is um, I praise God for traveling mercies. These past few weeks, we went back and forth to Maryland, five hours drive, for a couple of times. Um, the van that uh, we own is still under Toyota warranty, meaning and preventive maintenance services, so meaning the tire rotation, oil change is still under them. So I'm pretty comfortable that it's in a very good condition. So I called Toyota to uh, do tire rotation, but they refused and they said, you're late one month. So you have to pay 75 bucks. I said, it's too much for a tire rotation to pay 75 bucks, I can do it myself. So I the tires were not even, and the one inside are totally worn out. It could lead to a very disastrous accident. So I praise God that He was able to show me that there's something wrong, or else we could end up in a big accident. When I brought it to Toyota, to Toyota, I feel bad about them, and I can't believe what they said. You can't drive this vehicle outside. It needs to be towed. So by that, I can feel God's traveling mercy is always with us. I really praise God for that. Amen. Um, anything else? Praises and prayers. Um, I want to... Uh, it's per request and praise. Um, Sandra's granddaughter, Aubrey, I work with her and we're friends. Mm -hmm. She is actually right now um, getting ready to go in for a C-section for her second child. Oh, wow. So she's really excited, but she's also nervous because she's never had to have a C-section. So praise God, but pray for her too. Mm -hmm. Amen. And also, um, I had some opportunities come up lately. Uh -huh. I don't want to praise God for because I didn't realize that they would come so easily, but I also want to pray that he uh, lets me make the right decision about those. Amen. Amen. Any more? Yes. We want to remember uh, what's the other, the nurse who works? Priska. Priska. She, she said that she has COVID. Oh. And, and she's, she's been sick. So she's been treating the symptoms and she's been homebound. So we want to keep her in prayer. She texted the group chat to the church this morning. Let's pray for uh, Prisca and all for uh, healing mercies from God. Yes, ma'am. It's amazing how God answers prayer. Amen. Sometimes I just pray three little simple prayers and he answers them right away. Amen. Amen. And I know Amen. it's an answer from him. Amen. Because it wouldn't happen otherwise, you know. I'm just thankful for that. Um, and I, I keep praying for the Holy Spirit for all of us. Any uh, more uh, praises and prayer? Um, yeah, uh, we praise God that we we are here again. Even though we were in West Virginia for about a month now, mm -hmm. but just because we are traveling, we don't want to give the bad impression that we're going to bring something <laughs> from out there. So we stay from about a month and nothing happens. Praises and prayer? Uh, I, I'd like prayer for my two stepdaughters. I haven't heard from them since their daddy died. Oh. And I don't know why. I tried to call them and I can't get them. Okay. Uh, unspoken prayers and praises. So those who can kneel, please kneel. And if you don't, please be seated. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for all the blessings that we receive. We thank Thee for the grace, the love, the blessings.
that you will continually give to each and every one of us. We praise thee for all the goodness, charming mercies, um, um, brothers who, and sisters who are back to worship with us. Um, we feel your love, Heavenly Father. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for our loved ones, our brothers and sisters who are sick right now. Um, for Scott and um, Aubrey, who's giving a C-section for the day, Lord, may you be with them, be with the doctors who treat them best of all, Lord, you are the best healer. And I know there's nothing impossible with you. We also pray for um, the uh, loved ones whom we are trying to connect and um, we can get in touch with. Heavenly Father, you know how we miss them and you can make a way for us to reconnect. Heavenly Father, we invite a holy presence to be with us this morning and uh, we will be able to express our unspoken praises and praise to thee and please be within our means and this is our prayer for today amen, amen. i think it's my turn again <laughs> that's right I praise God that I was able to wake up at uh, 10.40. I said, we're getting late. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Um, the title of our uh, a message for today is How Long for God to Answer? Have we asked this question to ourselves? Especially now during the time of pandemic, I believe most of the people is asking, God, how long? How long this will pandemic be here? We know that the effect of this pandemic is innumerable. Loss of life, loss of business, loss of jobs separation from family, isolation, poor health. So majority probably is asking, Lord, how long? This uh, brought me back to one of the kings of Israel by the name of David. Uh, let us turn our Bibles for today. By the way, be ready because we are going to study a whole uh, chapter for this morning. So it's can, it can be lengthy. Amen. Uh, open your books or your Bibles on um, Psalms 13. Let us read the six verses of this chapter. Verse 1, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Chapter 3, consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I, sleep, lest I sleep the sleep of death, lest my enemy say, I have privilege against him, lest those who have troubled me rejoice when I am moved. Chapter 5, but I have trusted your mercy, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen. Let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite thy holy presence to open our hearts and minds that we may be able to comprehend 
and apply the message today. This morning, this is our prayer. Um, Psalms 13, this uh, uh, six verses is divided into three parts. Uh, first will be 1 to 2, chapter 1 to 2. It is mentioning or it's talking about the problem that David is facing during the time. Verses 3 to 4 is the petition of David or the prayer of David to God for the problems that he is experiencing. And the third is the praise of David to God because of the problem that he is experiencing. So, let us Read again the problem. If you are going to read the chapters one, uh, the verses one to two, you will notice that David mentioned. By the way, the one that I read the version, uh, the the version of the Bible mentioned it four times. Met the um, David mentioned. How long, Lord? Four times. If you are going to ask or tell God, how long should I suffer? How long will this trouble be? Meaning, this is intense. What are you experiencing is intense. It's unbearable and it's already a prolonging agony. So, let us enumerate um, the problems of King David, or David, sorry, during the time. Number one problem is, was King Saul, the king of Israel during the time. The king, he serves. His own father-in-law is trying to hunt and kill him because of envy. If your father-in-law or someone really close to you whom you serve is trying to kill you, it really feels so bad. And because of that, it goes to the next problem with this. He lives in the dress, he lives in the desert. Um, we live in UAE for six years and when you say it's hot it's really hot it seems that you're always outside a big oven that's how the feeling the radiation the heat that you feel is just like you're always outside the have the oven so it's really that hot and imagine uh, during the time David is hiding was hiding on the caves with his men and even though he has a chance to kill Saul he did not and last problem of David was waiting David knows from the younger years that Samuel was anointed him to be the king of Israel. If somebody told you or anointed you, Brighton, you will be the next king, and you are experiencing these hardships, won't you question God? Imagine the next king is being hunted by the king, by the current king, and once he's dead. So those are the problems of uh, David during the time. The verses 1 and 2, if you are going to interpret it, David, God, David,
its God seems to be distant. When we are in the midst of the crisis of life, the experience of David, we will feel the same or even worse. How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? This is the verse 1. Did God really forget his servant David? God didn't forget David or didn't forget us, the people of God, during this pandemic. Let us remember that. Let us read on Isaiah 49, 15. It says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast? and have no compassion on the child she has born. Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Amen. I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. He himself, on Hebrews 3, 5, has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. God will never forget us, whatever difficulties or trials, if we are his child. <clears throat> if we are in the midst of, the of a trouble, we, our tendency is what? We want, we are in a hurry to get out of it. Sometimes it seems that we could, if we pray, as if God moves so slowly, we live in a day that says, hurry, hurry. But so often God says, wait. We Brothers and sisters, let us remember that there is no instant righteousness. God said, wait, you have to learn something. As David, God is building maturity as he learned to trust in him. Um... Philip Brooks once said, The trouble is, I am in a hurry, but God is not. Let us uh, illustrate it as each and every one of us is a gold. When you mine a gold, it's not a 24 karat gold. It has imperfections. It has impurities. It has to go to a furnace, um, extreme heat, to remove its imperfections, its impurities, and at the end, you will get 24 karat gold. <clears throat> Proverbs 17.3, uh, it says, um, the crucible is for silver, furnace is for gold, and the Lord tests hearts. Zechariah 39. And I will put this third into the fire and refines them as one uh, refined silver and test them as gold is tested. They will call upon my name, and I will answer them. They are my people. And they will say, the Lord is my God. So let us remember, God tests hearts of his people. And when we finish when we were tested as gold we will call to God and say God the Lord is our God 
and God will answer, you are my people. Job um, chapter 23 verse 10. It says, But he knows the way that I take. When he tried me, I shall come out as good. We know what Job has been through. And until the end, Job stand with the Lord. Have you ever noticed the difference between God's timetables and ours? Let us remember Joseph when he was in prison, when he interpreted the dream of the cupbearer that he will be back to serve the king. What he asked the cupbearer, remember me when you go back to service. Did he remember Joseph immediately? No. He forget Joseph until the, uh, the king or the pharaoh had this dream. That's the only time he remembered Joseph. So Joseph keep waiting and waiting and waiting in the prison until the big day for Joseph came. He became the governor. The problem with um, some believers are they can depend or they they want to have their own timetable. Like when God will come, you know, it's been a great depression several times. Is it 1948? Is it year 2000? And they fail because they don't trust God's timetable. They try to rely, to rely on their own understanding. Let us remember that we have to wait for God's timing because that's the best timing for each and every one of us. Next, we move to um, verses 3 and 4. We know already the problem of David. Um, it feels bad when we say that even Christians, when we have this trouble or big problems, we were not able to come to the Lord or proceed to the next step, which is pray and petition. What commonly happened was, rather than petition, it leads to depression. Because of what? Because we try to be very emotional. We focus on ourselves. We, we tend to uh, distrust God on His purpose. Let us look on the petitions of David. Chapter 3, uh, verse 3 said, Look on me and answer. This is his prayer to God. Look on me and answer, Lord, my God. That is his first petition. Um, David is showing that rather than being depressed, he turned and kneeled for prayer and trust God that no matter no matter what the, the situation may come upon us we must always pray look on me he's trying to imply that God give me some regards give me some consideration this is the petition of David Next, petition, give me light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. What, what does he mean by give me light to my eyes? Meaning, David is looking for answers from the Lord. He wants God to speak with him how he's, why he's 
dealing with these problems. Um, the most common problem why Christians doesn't have maturity during this time is that rather than turning to God, they turn to the world. But what did David do? David turned away from the world and turned in to God. Um, let us uh, dig into um, to the uh, statement of David that says, "Give light." To my eyes. David didn't focus only to himself or to his own sufferings. Rather, he focused on God's plan to him. Enlighten me. It means open eyes to see what God is working. God is in control. See the way that God sees life. We have to look on spiritual things rather than carnal, physical things on earth. Ezekiel 28, 4, it says, By your wisdom and understanding, you have made wealth for yourself and have saved gold and silver to you. So, if you're going to give, if you're going to petition to God and ask to give us enlightenment, wisdom, it's just like asking for wealth of gold and silver to us. Matthew Henry, one of the Bible commentary scholars said, we should never allow ourselves to make any complaints but what are fit to be offered up to God and what drives us to our knees. That is found on Matthew's Henry's commentary 3 to 82. Four lessons from 13 to 3 to 4. Our prayer should be concerned for God's glory not just for our happiness. We must seek God, especially when He seems distant. I remember this song when I was a kid. Um, have you heard the song, I Cast All My Cares Upon You? Or, um, I'm sorry for my voice, but I love this song. Um, um, this is the only one that I remember to that song, and I will try to sing. I cast all my cares upon you. Have you heard that? I lay <coughs> all of my burdens down at your feet. And this is the best thing. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. And um, lastly, we must keep an awareness of God and the enemy before us at all times. Um, if we remember, Derek Kinder Wright said, awareness of God and the enemy is very is, virtu is virtually the hallmark of every psalm of David. The positive and negative charge which produce the driving force of his best years. As Christian, the honor of God is at stake through us. I will repeat that. As Christians, the honor of God is at stake through us. If we fail him, the enemy will rejoice. 
1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your worries on him because he cares for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me and I will give you rest. So if we are weary, we are tried, we are tired. Let's remember there is God who will give us rest. And lastly, uh, verses 5 to 6. This is the praise of David. Can we praise God in the midst of this pandemic? Can we think of good things during trouble times? I can, I can say that I spend more time at home, save a little, because we can go out. Um, let's read on the praise. Um, five to six, it says, The Lord tests the righteous, but, oh, sorry, five to six. But I have trusted your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Amen. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Amen. Do we feel that the Lord has dealt bountifully with with us throughout this life do we still have the reason to doubt, to doubt him after all of these years of blessings David has described the hope that he has in the Lord what changed David from focusing on himself and focus his thoughts to the Lord. David, David shifted his thoughts to God, to God's love and salvation. So rather than focusing on ourselves, we have to focus like David to God's love and salvation. Focus on joy and praises rather than Depressions. By faith, David counts God's future deliverance as past and says, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. David reveals the power of God for salvation. He acknowledged the power of God. Like David, may the power of God reveal in our lives. According to Ellen G. White, the more we reveal the power of an indwelling Savior, the more of His power will be manifested to us. The bright and cheerful side of our religion will be represented by all who are daily consecrated to God. We do not want to dishonor God by the mournful relation of trials and appear grievous. All trials that are received as educators will produce joy. The whole religious life will be uplifting, elevating, ennobling, fragrant with good words and works. The enemy is well pleased to have souls complaining stumbling their way along, depressed, downcast, mourning, and groaning, because Satan wants just such impressions made as to the effects of our faith. Do we get that? Satan wants just such impressions made as the effects of our faith. So every time we complain to God, we stumble, we feel depressed, we mourn, we groan. Satan is happy. 
God designs the level of that the mind shall take no low level. So in times of trouble, my dear brothers and sisters, in times of problem, let us be reminded on how David deal with these things. He identified his problem, he petitioned and prayed to God, and pray and praise and trust on God. That is my prayer this morning. And may God bless us all. Amen. Amen.